it's Steph here with Crafty Ladybug. Today's lesson is going to be on the garden arch. The garden arch that I have created here was made using green bands and white bands. Today's arch I'm going to demo using brown and a different shade of green. We're going to need some additional supplies to complete this project. You will need 16 gauge stem wire. If you decide to do your arch in white, you will have to either spray paint or hand paint the wire white. I'm going to be using brown, so I'm going to be doing mine in brown today. I will be using brown wire. So you need 16 gauge wire, sprayed or tinted, painted in the color of your choice. Most of you will probably want to do white, but as I said, I'm doing brown today. A little paint brush in case you have the acrylic paint and you have to paint your wire. We're also going to be needing our wire cutters, and that is for the support on the side beams. You'll need a skewer or an extra hook, something to secure some bands off on. We're going to need around 104 green bands, and we're going to need around 300 brown bands. Or if you decided to do white, or black, gray, silver, whatever color you decide to make your arch. You're going to need about 300 for the actual color of the arch. But the grass area, I would recommend that you try to keep that as a green. Okay, let's begin today's tutorial lesson with our loom set in the offset position. And we're going to be working on the base first. So we're going to make two of these bases, which is pretty simple. It's a, a double, triple bracelet type of situation. So we want to take a single band and we want to place it on the end of our loom, center position, that's going to be our dangle band or our securing band. Two bands are going to go in the center, two bands from left to center, two bands from right to center. Push those down slightly. Then we're going to come down our loom one, two, three, four, five, six times with two bands. Two bands once, two bands twice, two bands three, two bands four, two bands five, and two bands six times. We're going to do that on the left side. We're also going to do that on the right side. Two bands, two bands, two bands, two bands, two bands, two bands. And then we're going to do a diagonal from left to center and another diagonal I'm sorry, left to center and right to center. I'm confused on my right to my left today. Now we can fill in the inside, the center bands. And once again, this is with two bands. And we're just going to complete our little area here with the last band in the center. You want to take one band and you want to cap it off on that area three times. Some people have a problem looping the cap band around, so I'm going to show you an easy way. Take your single band and be sure to put your hook through the center of that band three times. So there's number one, twist, number two, twist, number three. And that's going to put three loops on your hook and then you can stretch that out over the end center band as a cap band. Now we need to lay a few horizontal bands and that's going to be just a simple triangle of one band, one band, one band, one band, and this is just securing our base together, and one band. And you want those to look like a little triangle. Now we can begin to loom. Reach into your cat band 
and the top two bands are going to the center. The next two bands are going off to my left. The next two bands are going off to my right. Now I want to loop my left side. Then I'm going to loop my right side. Then I'm going to loop my center. And this is just basic, straightforward looping. And you want to loop all the way up and do your diagonal also. And we want to come on the right side, reach into that right peg at the bottom, and we're grabbing our two bands, and we are just looping forward. If I'm going too fast for you, hit the pause button to catch up. This is an advanced loom, an advanced project. So if you don't feel comfortable at my speed, please hit the pause button. And then we're going to complete the center. And when we get all finished, we're going to have a beautiful garden arch that I will show you how to decorate in a different lesson. Okay, and my center is complete, and I just need to secure it off by reaching in to get my securing band at the bottom. Pull it out, do a slip knot over top, and I'm ready to pull this off the loom. And here we have just created one of our bases that we need for the bottom area of the arch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my securing band right now. So I don't forget to do that later. You can do it later if you wish, but I just like to kind of tuck it in and hide my securing band now because we're going to be using this piece again in just a few minutes. You don't really want it sticking out anywhere. So just hide that securing band. And here we have like a little grassy platform that we're going to use in a couple minutes. Now we need to make two of these because we have two sides of the arch. One and two. So let's begin again with a single band dangling over the center. Two bands in the center. Two bands on a diagonal two bands on a diagonal. We're going to come down six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Come down six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we want to complete off that diagonal with two bands on each side. And then we want to do our center. And miss that peg with two bands. I'm just filling in the center. to do a three time cat band at the bottom. One time, twist and two, twist and three. Stretch that over your bottom band there in the center. And now we want to lay our horizontal bands, which are just single bands coming up the loom. And I may have forgotten to mention, but I use my arrows pointing towards my body. I hope I said that at the beginning, but if I didn't, you've probably figured it out by now. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't mention that if I didn't earlier. Now we need to begin our looping, reach into that three-time cat band, and get the top two bands, which are going to be going up to the center. The next two bands are going over to the left, and the next two bands are going over to the right. And we're going to loop forward, just basic looping. And 
nothing too difficult about this, just straightforward looping. Probably one of the easiest parts of the arch. I actually think the arch design is pretty simple, like the layout of the bands and the looping. It's the construction in the end that's a little difficult. Sorry, I was having problems getting my bottom two bands out. And we're working up the right side now. And the right diagonal. And we'll work up the center. center looping is complete. We want to reach into that end and get our securing band, pull it out and slip knot it off. As I said, if I'm going too fast, just simply hit the pause button. Everyone works at a different pace. Some people are used to my videos and want me to go faster. Some people want me to go slower, but there is that pause button. So here we just have our little platform that I've pulled off the loom. I'm going to hide my securing band. And I just use a, a finer hook to hide my securing band. And it's just a basic crochet hook. They come in all different kinds of sizes. Um, just hide it back in there. Okay. So we have our two grassy little platforms made. Platform number one and platform number two. Now we can begin by laying our bands for the sides. If you've done the sailor's pinstripe bracelet, this is going to be a very similar technique. And I have just dumped out a pile of rubber bands because I know I'm going to be using quite a few of them. Uh, about 300 total to finish this project. So let's begin. Our first step is going to take three bands. We need three bands total and we're going to run three bands down the left side and three bands down the right side and that's going to be our first step. Arrows pointing towards our body and I start off at the top with three bands. Three bands. Very simple, just you're making a pretty much a chain, a straight one peg or one, one set loom chain with three bands. And I will be fumbling with the three bands, but this makes it thicker on the sides. And I'm not using the best quality of brown, and I decided to use brown this time because some garden arches are painted white. Some are made with the raw wood, so this one here that I'm demoing today is just going to be the raw wood. As I said, you can use any color that you wish. I just chose to make it look natural and realistic today. And then we want to come all the way down to the bottom with our three bands. Next we want to do the right side which will be three, three, and we can fast forward through this part if you need to. You should have the hang of just laying three bands down the loom by now. As I said, this is um, an advanced project, but it, I don't think it's difficult. The steps are pretty simple. It's just adding all the components together. That's the difficult part. And at the end, when we need to run the wire through for securing, that can be a little tricky. So that's why I'm giving this a difficulty level of hard. And I'm still laying three bands. Three bands. Three bands. And the end is going to be 
three beans again. Okay. Our next step will be to come back up here at the top again. And at the top, we're going to tie two bands together in a slip knot. I hold one band in my right hand, one band in my left. Place my right over my left band, right over left on top, and then reach in and grab your left band portion through the right center and the opposite on the other. And you just tie a slip knot in your band. We're going to skip peg number one, and we're going to go down to the second set of pegs. And we're going to do this slip knot technique, right over left, all the way down our loom to one of the last few pegs. So just keep following me all the way down your loom with this slip knot. As I said, if you did the Sailor's Reef Knot bracelet, this is very similar. And I know I've got really fat fingers, so it might be hard to see sometimes what I'm doing on camera. But it's left over right, or right over left, right over left. And just reach in and grab each one. Right over left. Once you get that little technique down, it's pretty quick. Once you get the movement down, I think it's pretty quick. And then we want to stop on the third peg up from the bottom. So we're going to go one, two, three, and we're stopping right there. So now you've noticed I haven't added any cat bands at the bottom. That is because this is where our base is going to go. Our base is going to be served as our cap band. So what I need you to do is to hold your base similar to your loom here. And we're going to be grabbing the second chain in on each side. This is considered chain one. And this one here is considered chain two. On the other end where we did our our tie and band off, that was chain number one, and this is chain number two. So we want to reach in there, and you want to grab that set of links, just the top portion of those links. So you should have four, four bands on your hook, like so. And on this side, if you have another hook, we're going to do the same thing if you don't have another hook. I just wanted to show you that you need the, oops, grabbed the wrong one. You need the four bands. And that's going to leave one, two, three, four, five links inside. So we're going to take our bands, these top four pieces, and we're going to loop it on to our last peg. Same thing for the other side. Just loop that on to our last peg. And that is going to form our cap bands. Now we can just loom straight forward on the left and we're going to loom straight forward on the right. So you just reached in and you're grabbing all three of your bands and you're coming straight forward. And as I said, my brown bands aren't the best quality. Um, I found them at a discount store nearby. So if you see any of them break, the reason being is because they're not high quality bands. But they were brown and I needed brown. I wanted brown for this project. As I said, if you don't have brown, white works well. We are going to finish off our last loop at the top of the left. And next we're going to come back down here to the right side. We're going to reach in, push back on that stuff. We're going to loom straight forward on the right. And just keep coming straight forward. Okay, and we're 
rest at the end. And we want to stop right there. And next thing we need to do is to make a transition. So we're going to be pulling this off the loom. And when you pull it off the loom, you can use your skewer. I just have a skewer here. And I'm just going to reach into my right set of bands. And then I'm going to use the same end and reach into my left set of bands. And you just want to gently pull this off the loom. When you get to the bottom, just pull that up a little bit. And here you'll see that our base is there and attaching our sides together. And the next step that we're going to do is to make this cross beam for a little bit of support and add the extra loops. And then that's going to complete, we're going to do the same linking technique again. That's going to complete one side of our arch. So while I get set up for the next step, just bear with me for a moment. I'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. Our next step, step is going to be to attach our base but we need to extend our base a little bit. So what I want you to do is to take three bands and we're going to come down our loom six times. One, two, this is with three bands, three, four, five, and six times. We're going to do the same thing on the right side. Just come down the loom with three bands. And I'm struggling today with these bands. I'm so sorry. We want to be unruly little creatures today. So this is just basic three bands straight down the loom again. Okay, our next step is going to be to take our set, our left set off of our skewer or your hook, and you want to place it over that end band there. And then you want to do the same thing for your right set. Stretch that over, kind of like you're doing a bracelet extension. So we've got our left side together and our right side together and then in between here we're going to be adding five bands to go across and this is forming the side beam right here so that's what we're going to do and add in this area right there we're going to do that just by taking our hook and you want to take two bands wrap it around your hook twice so you have four bands on there. Take two bands, slide that over, and then reclaim. Two bands, slide it over, and reclaim. Basically you're making just a small chain with two bands and you're just using your hook with it. Two bands, slide through and reclaim. So we have got five links on here. One, two, three, four, and five. So for those five links, we're going to stretch it across and we're going to put it on these bands right here again. So you want to take your open end, which is kind of like the cat band, and you want to place that on the left. And this side over here, Stretch that out over your right. And that's going to be our securing piece right there, which makes it look like a side edge. And that's where we're going to be bending our wire when we get to that step. Next thing that we need to do is to finish off this center area with our slip knots. I want to skip the first one. And we're just going to fill this area in with our slip knots. And then we're going to loop that portion. And 
And then we want to begin looping forward by reaching into that left band, and there's a lot on it. And you want to get your bottom three. Reach through all those bands, get your bottom three, and come forward. We're going to loom our left side all the way up. Just keep looming all the way up. And stop there on the left. Come down here to your right. Reach in beyond all those bands. And you want to get your bottom three. And as I said before, there's a lot on there. Got my bottom three. And I'm just going to loom forward. Right on up the right side. And we are going to complete the project or this side of the loom right here. Finish there. Take your skewer, reach into your right side into your left side and then take that off the loom. So we have something that kind of looks like this. When we put our wires in it'll stretch out the edges and your knots will become tighter and somewhere in here I missed a band and I'm not quite sure where Looks like maybe I just missed one looping forward. So I'm just simply going to cut it off because it's not holding anything together. So I just trim that off. And yours should be okay. Mine's fine. Just I don't know where that band came from and it's okay. That doesn't have to be an exact science. Now we need to set this aside and we need to make that one more time. So. Let's begin with our three bands, and you can either rewind and play the video over, or you can follow along with me. Three bands. Three. Some people were unhappy that I made them go back and rewatch the video to do the second step, so I'm just going to continue to do it on camera. And lay our three bands down. And three more, three more, and straight down with your three bands. And just continue to lay those right down the loom. I am hoping to do this part faster because we've already done it once. So if I do pick up my speed, remember you always have the pause button there. We're just laying three bands all the way down. And that one had only gotten two. There's my number three. Three bands. you guys follow along with my videos normally. I wish that I had elevator music playing in the background, but we're not allowed to play music because it's copywritten. So you guys just get to hear me hum and talk to myself. And last three bands. Now we're going to take our base and we're going to adhere our base by going in to get the second loop for those. Place that on your base. Whoops, there's your cap band. Here's my cap band. And these four over here on the side. And that's going to be placed there for my cap band. And then we need to do our slip knot area. Skipping the first peg. And we start off on the second peg for that. And 
I think the slip knot just kind of makes it look like lattice work. You see those lattice arbors, garden arbors? That's kind of what this is inspired by. And actually, I had made the arbor first and then realized, wow, that would make a really cool bracelet. So I did research on it and I found out that this knot is called a reef knot, sailor's reef knot. Not actually a slip knot, but we kind of call them slip knots. So then I put out the sailor's reef knot bracelet. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, it's very similar in technique. Just the way that you gather it up together is a little different at the end than this arch. And I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm not doing the center section here because we want a little bit of space in between it. So now I'm ready to loom up my left side. And this is just loop up my left side. Straightforward looping. And just continue to loop up the left. I, as I said, I think this technique is pretty simple. Not a lot of difficulty, just doing a straightforward loop. It's just when you go to connect the pieces and you have to make that extra little extension. Some of you might be a little confused there. I'm reaching into my right. I like to pick my loom up. I think it gives it more, I know it's just easier for me to pick up my loom. So I'm sorry if my hands are in the way, but it's kind of difficult not to get your hands in the way when you're filming and working on something crafty. And we're almost on our right side. And then we'll need to make our extension and then just put the thing together. So I'm gonna finish my right side. I want to reach in with my hook or skewer. Here we go, another skewer. And grab those two sides, pull that off the loom. Now we need to do our attachment which is going to be three bands coming down six times. One, <clears throat> excuse me, two, three, four, five, and six. This again was just three bands. Those are a little twisted. And on the other side, we need to do three bands. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're going to take our first piece Stretch out the left over that. Stretch out our right over that. Just like we would be doing a bracelet extension. And just kind of lining them up in the center there. So you guys get an idea for what it looks like. And next part we need to make our uh, five links. Three, four, and five. So we need to do our five link across here. Taking two bands, run your hook through once, twist in twice, two bands pulled through and reclaimed. So you're making a loomless link with two bands. Pull through and pull through. So here we have our five links on. These were with two bands, not three bands. So just remember that, that was with two bands. And we're going to place this on the loom. 
stretch out your end piece there over the left side. Stretch out this piece over the right side. And we need to do our slip knots in between. And you're skipping the first peg, going to the second peg. And just doing your slip knots. Continue down. You all know I can't sing, so I'm not even going to try. Okay. And now we need to finish off this loom. Reach all the way in through all those bands and get the bottom three. And we're going to loop straight up on the left side. Continue to loop straight up. And stop there on the left. Reach into your right and you want to get those bottom three bands. And I'm just reaching through everything. I've got my bottom three. And I'm going to come straight forward. And we're almost done our second set of the arch. So the last part we'll need to do is just to attach the two pieces and then run our wire through. So here is our second side of the arch done. And it looks just like our first side. So we have two pieces here. Set one side off on the left and set one side off on the right. And the next thing that we need to do is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to have you turn the loom so that the arrows are pointing from the left going towards the right. And for this step, we're going to be needing two bands. And you're going to lay two bands on this bottom peg five times. So there's one. This is with two bands. Two, three, four, and five. So that's one, two, three, four, five bands. One, two, three, four, five bands that we've got laid across. And we're going to take a side, the side that we set off to our right, and this little piece here should be facing up towards you. You want to actually turn this piece over to make that kind of where we connected it. You want that part facing down. And then I want you to take your hook, slide it through that set of three bands, and pull out your skewer. On this piece here, we're going to take two bands and slide that through that portion right there and hook up those two bands. And then you want to place that two bands on that side also. Kind of like we're making an extra link in there. On this left side, reach in and reclaim that on your hook. Two bands, pull through, and you can reclaim that on your hook also. And then this is going to get stretched out all the way over here to that last peg. And now we need to do the same thing for this other portion. But for this other portion, we want to make sure that this outside part is facing up, pointing up towards us. This is the difference between these, these two pieces, is that little outside piece. So since my left side is the first two coming out, I'm just going to slide that out. Two bands, pull through there and reclaim, 
and claim those two bands. And then we're going to add that onto our outer peg. And I still have the two bands on the skewer. I'm going to reclaim those. Or I'm sorry, that was our three bands on the skewer. And then I'm going to take two more bands. I'm going to pull through and reclaim. Reclaim those two bands. And we're going to stretch that out to that last peg. So here we have our arch together and now we're going to stitch the top by reaching in through all those bands and you want to get the bottom two and you want to loop forward and loop forward, forward, forward and forward. Now we've reached our end and you want to secure this off. I would secure it off with two bands. Reach in through all of that, grab your two bands, pull it up through and slip knot that off with your two bands. Now we're ready to take it off the loom. You guys will see that your top piece has stitched together your two sides and it should look something like this. It's not going to be stretched out yet because we still need to run our wire through and get that taken care of. So our next step is going to be to run our wire through and I will be back to show you that step in just one moment. Hey guys, I want you to take your creation and you should have your kind of bubbled pieces pointing up, the pieces that stick out. What I want you to do is to turn that over and make sure that those are facing down. And for today's video purposes, I'm going to be using the green wire just to show you so you'll see the color difference with them. Um, so if you did white, you want to be using your white wire. And if you're doing the brown, you want to use brown. Although the green's really not going to show up that much differently in between it. But just for today's video purposes, I wanted to show you some color difference in this technique. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. So you guys will be able to see what I'm doing. I want you to take your wire. And we're going to be taking the wire and we're running it through the bottom link that we secured our side through. Push that through. And then we're just going to be weaving in and picking up one band of each link that we come to. And the start is really difficult to get one band on there. It doesn't matter if you get two, just one looks best. That one I did grab two. And then as you come up each link, you want to grab just one band out of each link. And this is going to be enough just to secure it. So you just want to weave right on up the loom, right on up your side. And you want to do that and push your wire up all the way till we get to the other end. So I am just going to continue to do this on camera for this side. And then I'm going to go off camera to do the other side. As I said, it is a little difficult to just get that band. But as you'll see, you just keep kind of pushing and working your way up the side. If you grab two bands, it's okay. It's not gonna be life or death of your arch. Just continue up, pushing down as you go, stretching it out across. And just 
keep going with it. As you can see, just keep keep going with it all the way till we get to the opposite end. So we're just going to continue to push this through, picking up one link along the way. And I'm sure that you guys have gotten the hang of this by now, so I'm actually going to finish mine off camera versus fiddling with it. So hit the pause button right here, and I will pick up with you once I get mine run through both sides. Run that through both sides. And I'll be back with you in a couple minutes. All right, guys, here I've got my arch with the wire run through both sides. And you can see I've kind of done my best to evenly space out the bands. You want to make sure that you don't have a huge cluster of bands down here on one side. And the next couple steps are going to be just a little tricky. But you want to um, stretch out your bands just a little bit. Stretch out your sides some. So you're tightening up those knots. And we're going to take our skewer or your hook and you want to place it on this center beam where the two pieces connected. Where those two pieces connected, you want to take and you want to bend up slightly in that spot, pushing down on your skewer. Just bend up slightly on both sides to get your arch to form. Actually, if you just bend up one side, let's go one side to a perpendicular. So we have our arch looking like this now. And then what we can do is to take our skewer again and we're gonna set it across this side beam right here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just gonna take and we're gonna bend up those two pieces of wire slightly just to give it a little bit of an angle. And we're gonna flip it over. I'm going to bend, placing our arch across that beam, or placing our skewer across that beam. Bend up slightly. And this has given our arch the shape that it needs. Just kind of pull and tug on it a little bit. Once you get your arch to your liking, and you've got it spaced out properly. You may need to fiddle with it just a little bit. Once you've got it spaced out properly, you want to cut off your excess wire. If you plan on sticking it into a piece of styrofoam to make a scene, you want to leave your wire just a little bit longer. But you just want to take a pair of clippers and cut off your wire. And I'm just cutting mine just a little bit longer than the base, where the base is right now. And then you can fiddle with it. You can extend down just a little bit and give it a little tug and stretch. And depending upon where you've bent your wire, you might need to play with it, as I said, just a little bit more. But here we have got our garden arch. And in the next uh, video, I will show you how to decorate up your arch with uh, some flowers and do some different things at the base with the grass. So here you've constructed your arch, and I think we've done well. As I said, just tweak with it just a little bit. And there we've got our garden arch all complete. All right, guys, here I've got my arch with the wire run through both sides. And you can see I've kind of done my best to evenly space out the bands. You want to make sure that you don't have a huge cluster of bands down here on one side. And the next couple steps are going to be just a little tricky. But you want to um, stretch out your bands just a little bit. Stretch out your sides some. So you're tightening up those knots. And we're going to take our skewer or your hook and you want to place it on this center beam where the two pieces connected where those two pieces connected you want to take and you want to bend up slightly in that spot pushing down on your skewer just bend up slightly on both sides to get your arch to form actually if you just bend up one side Let's go one side to a perpendicular. 
So we have our arch looking like this now. And then what we can do is to take our skewer again and we're going to set it across the side beam right here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to take and we're going to bend up those two pieces of wire slightly just to give it a little bit of an angle. And we're going to flip it over and we're going to bend placing our arch across that beam or placing our skewer across that beam. Bend up slightly. And this has given our arch the shape that it needs. Just kind of pull and tug on it a little bit. Once you get your arch to your liking and you've got it spaced out properly, you may need to fiddle with it just a little bit. Once you've got it spaced out properly, you want to cut off your excess wire. If you plan on sticking it into a piece of styrofoam to make a scene, you want to leave your wire just a little bit longer. But you just want to take a pair of clippers and cut off your wire. And I'm just cutting mine just a little bit longer than the base, where the base is right now. And then you can fiddle with it. You can extend down just a little bit and give it a little tug and stretch. And depending upon where you've bent your wire, you might need to play with it, as I said, just a little bit more. But here we have got our garden arch. And in the next uh, video, I will show you how to decorate up your arch with uh, some flowers and do some different things at the base with the grass. So here you've constructed your arch, and I think we've done well. As I said, just tweak with it just a little bit. And there we've got our garden arch all complete.